Hi everybody, this is Mrs. Kim and I'm here with Mrs. Erling and Mr. Knox and today I'm here to talk about, or we are here to talk about, Chapter 14, Section 2, Blood and Limp. Your book should be open to page 563 and it goes till 569. What is blood? Blood is actually considered a tissue and an adult has of an average size has about five liters of blood. So if you think of the two liter soda bottles that you get at the market, they have about two and a half bottles of that. What about a child? Uh, a child of about 80 pounds has about half of that. Your blood is made of four parts. Plasma, plasma is right here, and you can see that it, it's mo more than half of your blood. Oops. red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets. Plasma takes up about 55% of your blood. It's the liquidy part of your blood. Without plasma, your blood will probably be very chunky. It carries nutrients. It also carries things like vitamins, minerals, glucose, which is the sugar that your cell needs, and it also carries away waste like carbon dioxide. It's yellow in color due to a certain protein that is in the plasma. And it's mostly made of water, 90%. The next part of blood is uh, platelets. Now platelets are parts of cells, they do not have a nucleus at all, and the platelet's main job is to help you stop bleeding. So if you get cut, scraped, if you're skateboarding and you get a scrape in your arm, it's the platelet's job to help stop the bleeding. So uh, you scrape your arm, uh, you cry, you will go home, by the time you get home it, it feels all goopy and stuff. That's the job of the platelets to stop uh, the stop the blood loss. Not only does it stop the blood loss on the outside, you guys bleeding on the outside, but it also stops the blood loss on the inside as well. So um, uh, the platelet's job is to help stop the bleeding. Now aspirin, if you have a grandparent that's had a heart attack, they might have to take aspirin every day. It's a blood thinner and what the aspirin does is it uh, inhibits the platelets from clotting and uh, uh, people who have had heart attacks is because they have uh, uh, clots or uh, they have uh, uh, cholesterol in their arteries and you don't want the blood to stop or clot up the, the, uh, the arteries so they take blood thinner which inhibits the platelets. So the platelets job basically stop you guys from bleeding, it clots up the blood. The next part of blood is the red blood cells. Now the red blood cells unfortunately a lot of you guys think uh, the blood is actually blue until it hits oxygen, then it magically turns to red. No, blood is always red. And the best way I can uh, have you guys demonstrate this, if you have a flashlight or a light at home, turn it on and then cover, not with a light, it'll hurt, but uh, cover your hand over the flashlight and uh, look, at your, look at your hand. You'll see it's red. If you have a, a light bulb, put your hand over, not on, over the light bulb, and again, you'll see uh, the red uh, glow of your hand. Blood is always red, okay? It can be dark red or bright red, depending on uh, if it has uh, lots of oxygen or if it uh, carries uh, very little oxygen. If it carries very little oxygen, it is dark red. If it carries lots of oxygen, it brightens up and turns bright red, okay? And um, again, you should already know this, blood is made in the bones, more specifically the red bone marrow, okay? So, to recap, uh, red blood cells, no nucleus, they carry oxygen. That's their only job, it's a very important job, they carry the oxygen. And um, the, the red blood cells are made in the bone marrow. Remember, blood is never blue. Table talk. Why do you think red blood cells have this shape and are flexible? This part was left out by Mr. Knox, but you don't get off that easy. Well, 
as Mr. Knox said, they need to be able to move through your body. If they were rigid, they would get stuck. You also have white blood cells. They are produced in the bone marrow. They are disease fighters. And in fact, white blood cells, uh, different white blood cells have different jobs in fighting disease. Some white blood cells tell your body that it has been invaded by a disease causing organism like bacteria. Some white blood cells make chemicals that fight these invading organisms and other white blood cells actually surround and kill these invading organisms like bacteria. There's actually fewer white blood cells in your body than there are red blood cells and they are larger in size than red blood cells. Cells contain a nucleus or white blood cells contain a nucleus and they can actually live for months or years. So table talk, think about this question. <laughs> when you have a cold, what would you expect a doctor to see when he looks at your blood under a microscope? Well, if you have a cold that is a disease causing virus, it attacks your body and white blood cells come to the rescue. So when you have a cold or maybe the flu, uh, your body increases its production of white blood cells. And actually, um, one treatment for cancer is um, getting bone marrow donated from someone else. And when you have a disease like cancer, your immune system isn't able to fight back. So they take the bone marrow from someone else that contains healthy white blood cells um, so that they can then fight off the cancer in the new body. The lymphatic system is a network of vein-like vessels that returns the fluid to the bloodstream. Now, when it says fluid, it's referring to mostly water. The lymphatic system is part of the cardiovascular system. Uh, the root lymph, or the word lymph, um, it is water and dissolved materials such as glucose inside the lymphatic system. And remember, your body needs glucose uh, to give it energy. Lymph nodes are small knobs of tissue that trap bacteria and disease-causing microorganisms like that pesky cold virus. Table talk. Why does the doctor, or perhaps your mom has done this too, sometimes feel under your jawbone when you don't feel well? Stop and think about that. That could be because when you're sick, your lymph nodes actually increase in size because they're trapping all that bacteria that's making you sick. 